And first, first we are teacher was a uh, teacher. Teacher, uh, teacher did brush. I uh, uh, did brush and uh, how how we are wash wash clothes. How we are washing a head. Lama Tenzin brought uh, so many uh, so many things like uh, towels, uh, clothes, and then then we uh, shower and clothes, and we are we are so happy. This is the first day for washing since they left Kathmandu, and the last one until the end of the journey. Raising the children and tending the house, animals, and fields is the work of women in Dalpo. The children help collect dung for fuel. In the wintertime, the women are left to fend for themselves. The men travel, carrying out trade and manual labor in order to earn cash. Sometimes, a mother or a child perishes in the harsh winter. Mortality rates for mothers and children are high in Dalpo. I think same example. Their life is like a blind, you know, totally dark. They have no choice. Or even you can say there's no life, you know. They're just giving a birth to baby, or they're looking for their family, or they're going for the field. In my point of view, I think they have no life, you know. They're just like idle people, you know. You have a specific you have to do this, do this, and do this. That's the only thing you have to do. You have to stay beyond, you, you have to stay under this line. That's, that's the life in there. Karma Dolma earns an income by working with Pempa in the CED home. On this visit, she gives all her savings to her mother. They do not know when they will see each other again. Karma Doma will leave with Chuni and continue her work at the CED. After Chuni and Karma Doma have said their goodbyes, they all press on for Karang where the rest of the children come from. They are re-energized from their two-day rest in Char Kabat. Lama Tenzin realizes that six hours of walking a day will not get them to their destination in good time. Their food supply decreases each day, and winter is coming. From now on, they must walk for at least 10 hours a day. They have been traveling for 13 days now, but this is where the journey becomes truly punishing. To keep them going, Lama Tenzin reminds the children of their special role in this world. The first step is they can bring the, like a big hope for the other children in the Tolpo. That's our first goal. Their first goal is uh, their own village. Then second goal is like all over the world. They can bring the message. They have, a, they have a lot of children even they say they call it like a lower caste or hopeless, but 
they have the same hope, same as like their child, the city or whatever. So they have a possible to change the like a life for these children in the Himalayan border regions. Those kids, whenever they go out there, when they have a inside this uh, like a you know, hope to uh, they are going to change the topo. So those are things like you know excitements. They give them energy to go up. they walk upon become treacherously thin. The pack horses are sent ahead to reduce the risk of the children getting pushed off the trail. They must exercise caution at all times. They are discussing about this road. They have a problem all the way out there. They have some problems with the sure, sure, sure. They have some road bro, like a landslide. So they have a problem, they could not go out there. But they have to very carefully go one by one, they have to go. Yes, they are getting some fear. But I have a more than the fear is that I have a more opportunity. You know, I just always made you know, putting a more opportunity, like, you know, hope on the front of the fear. So when I put the hope in front of the fear, then I forget the fear. Because of the, I knew in this fear, they, they cannot make my mission possible. So I was taking my hope to say, yes, I can do this, and then I can get these things. So that's why I always, uh, uh, you know, uh, they have less fear. Yes, I do have fear, but they have less fear. At this elevation, the air is thin and the cold is piercing. Breathing is difficult and the terrain is punishing. They are far from their target destination, but the children have slowed down. Soon it will be dark. Karma feels the toll of days of trekking with only breakfast and dinner to fuel his young body. A severe headache brings him to tears. Some of the other children also complaining of headaches. It is the altitude taking an effect on their bodies. These children were born in the highest villages in the world, but they have lived in lower altitudes for so long. It will take time for their bodies to readjust. Lama Tenzin takes Karma in his arms and does his best to make Karma feel better, reassuring him that all will be well by morning. The horses too feel the brunt of the journey under the weight that they have been carrying day in and day out. The horsemen sing to them to give them courage and strength. The children are now walking noticeably slower. 
Their footsteps are no longer accompanied by laughter and song. The simple act of putting one foot in front of the other leaves them all breathless. Children, adults, and animals alike struggle with every step they take towards the highest mountain pass on this journey. At 18,000 feet above sea level, they need to stop to rest every 15 minutes. Cold, wet, and hungry, Pamalamo is stricken with hypothermia, one of the many risks trekkers are exposed to in the Himalayas. Her body is losing heat. If her body temperature drops further, she will fall into a stupor, and her body will slowly begin to shut down. There are no hospitals, doctors, or clinics anywhere nearby. Lama Tenzin and Pempa rely on the traditional remedies of the experienced Sherpas to help Pema Lama regain consciousness. They must do everything they can to warm her. Unaware of what has happened to her daughter, Pema Lama's mother, Niman Hamu, eagerly awaits their arrival and dreams of her daughter's future. That <laughs> The younger children are anxious about their Pemalamu, who they consider their eldest sister. The Sherpas help to revive her, but she remains weak. She cannot walk and must be carried in a basket by one of the Sherpas. This is not the strong Pemalamu that the other children have come to love. <laughs> <laughs> they try to lift her spirits with songs and silly antics, 
with a smile comes to her lips. They know she is out of harm's way. This is a salam. Over there. This is the salam. And this is the karang. And the out there is the marang. We are very close, maybe two hours. when they left to join Lama Tenzin at CED. And it looks different from the place in their dreams. The older children egg the younger ones on. This is it. <laughs> They wait for their families on the grounds of a newly built primary school. At first, no one is there. But moments later, the village children gather around. News of their arrival quickly spreads through the village and the women begin to come in from the fields. Lama Tenzin is greeted with respect. As he watches the many reunions taking place around him, he beams with joy of having fulfilled his promise to the children. The village children and the CED children greet each other 